A common question I get is, Dr. Ben, how do I use sound therapy best for tinnitus treatment? And what role does different technology have in helping me? Today's video will cover the best sound machines, sleep headbands, bone conduction headsets, hearing aids, and other options available to help with tinnitus sound therapy. As an audiologist, this is something I have a passion for. And trust me, you do not want to try to tough it out in silence. You need sound therapy to help you through this retraining period. Think about it this way. When I break my wrist, I go to the doctor and they tell me, okay, you have an injury, something went wrong, it's going to take a certain amount of time and you're going to use tools to help the body heal. By the end of it, you won't need the tool. If I break my wrist, the doctor is going to give me a wristband or a cast and by the end of it, I won't need the cast. So don't think of this as giving in or giving up to the tinnitus. Using sound therapy is a therapeutic benefit. It helps reduce the neurons around the tinnitus in the auditory brain, which you need to work on if we're going to help retrain your tinnitus. Hello, my name is Dr. Ben Thompson. I'm an audiologist and founder of treblehealth.com. I have a team of audiologists that specializes in tinnitus management via telehealth. Today's video will now go into the details of how to use sound therapy at home during the day, at work, outside of home, and at home at night when you're trying to sleep. The first technology I will introduce to you today is a sound machine. This is an example of a $50 sound machine from a company called Sound Oasis. Now let me make one thing clear. It's not important what technology or what brand the different sound therapies come from. The most important principle is sound enrichment. This might not be what your average audiologist tells you, but let me be very clear. The key neurologically from a brain perspective is that we want constant sound enrichment, low level sound enrichment throughout our waking hours during the tinnitus retraining period. Understand this with me. The principle of sound enrichment is more important than whatever technology you're using on your ears or in your environment to help you. Sound enrichment means that you're not trying to tough out your tinnitus in silent places, and instead you're using some form of technology or natural sound to have low level sound stimulation. This can include sounds like white noise, pink noise, natural water sounds, river, rain, ocean waves, nature sounds like crickets, or instrumental music, regular music, podcasts, television, conversation, or being next to a natural nature sounds like a river, being outside, going on a walk. Okay, sound therapy for tinnitus just got easier than I thought. I wanna share an example that helps patients understand this very well, and I think it will help you too. So if you're having white noise played from a sound machine or hearing aids in your ears, or if you're camping next to a river for the weekend and you have white noise around your ears 24 seven, your brain does not have a preference for which technology or natural sound that's coming from. As you're listening to the rest of this video to understand the different technology, ask yourself, what is feasible for my lifestyle? How can I have sound enrichment during my tinnitus retraining period? Based on your lifestyle, you can pick the different technologies that help and make sense for you. Now let's start with this sound machine and explain how it's used. Typically I see patients using this either in their home office if they're not on meetings all day or in their background of their house. You can put this on in your kitchen, you can put this on in your bedroom during the day. This guy can be used during the day and at night because it can very easily be plugged into the wall and you can play the different sound therapy tracks uh, during the day or during the night. The good thing I like about this is that it comes with a little computer chip inside of it so it does not rely on Bluetooth and it's nice to have something independent from the audio channels of my smartphone. Now let's focus on technology that can be used during the day. I'm going to start with bone conduction headphones. I ordered a pair of bone conduction headphones myself and wore them during my day. One thing I love about this is that it keeps the ear canal open. Whichever sound therapy technology you choose, I strongly advise to keep your ear canals open because the ambient sound around you can help with your habituation. It can help with the tinnitus retraining that gets us to the point where the brain tunes out 
and reduces the tinnitus perception over time. Notice how these keep my ears canals nice and open and they're not too visually distracting either. So bone conduction headphones, they're playing sound through the bone right next to my ear, which is connected to the mastoid bone. And that's actually sending the sound waves through. Works quite well has a battery life that shouldn't last all day, but situationally as needed, these can work pretty well during the day. Next on the list is ear level sound generators. These are used for patients who have a hearing test in the normal range. They look quite similar to hearing aids. You put them up and behind your ear with a thin tube or a wire inside the ear canal, and then you can wear them around during the day and they keep the ear canals open because they have rubber tips that have natural holes in them. This is something that you typically get through a clinic and an audiologist who can help you identify if this is the right fit for you. Another great option during the day are hearing aids. You can have these programmed for tinnitus. Whether you have a hearing loss or your hearing is in the normal range, you can get these hearing aids programmed for your tinnitus. One great thing about these is that they do connect to Bluetooth. They also work quite well without Bluetooth. Therefore, they're quite versatile and these are considered the gold standard for ear level sound therapy in the world right now. There's many different brands of hearing aids. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel to learn about the different kinds of hearing aids for tinnitus and other tinnitus technology tips, which I'll be glad to guide you on. Now we're going to transition into what kind of sound therapy can be used in the evening. One cheap, easy to use piece of technology that I've found from one of my patients who I reached out to us, reached out to our team, is a sleep headband. So you put this on over your head like this, and there's a little controller here that connects to Bluetooth with some little speakers that go over the ear. So you connect this to your phone or your computer, whatever's playing Bluetooth, and the sound is nice and gently played into the ears throughout the evening. So you can sleep on either side, and it's not hard or uncomfortable. You can sleep quite well with this Bluetooth headband for tinnitus during the night. Another good option for during the night are Bose sleep buds. I'm going to show some images on the screen right now of what the Bose sleep buds look like. They're small devices that fit nice and comfortably inside of the ears. They do occlude the ears, which is fine during the evenings, and you can connect your phone with Bluetooth through the Bose app. The pro here is that they are customized for sound therapy, for tinnitus, for sleeping. The con here is that it does rely on your phone to get the sound. Another consideration is that the only Bluetooth streaming through the Bose sleep buds comes through the Bose app, which is proprietary and you cannot stream your own Bluetooth or your own audio to the Bose sleep buds. A few more points in this video that I wanted to make. I wanted to comment on the Apple AirPods or the Apple AirPods Pro. Now these fit in the ears pretty well. And for anyone who wears Apple AirPods or Apple AirPods Pro, you know that it occludes or it blocks your ear different degrees based on how much you push it into your ear. If you're using something for sound therapy that blocks your ear, like these kinds of Bluetooth headphones, I don't recommend this for daily use long-term. When it blocks your ear, blocking your ear actually makes your tinnitus louder, and therefore you're just going to have to increase more sound through the devices to counteract and mix with the tinnitus. Some other downsides of completely blocking your ears are that your own voice changes the natural sound, other people sound different, and any sound entering your ears has to come through the devices. So AirPods can actually have transparency mode set, meaning you can hear the natural world around you, but it's a computerized, processed ambient sound, ambient noise, instead of the natural ambient noise that comes from the other sound therapy devices I was referring to earlier. So of course, the AirPods are quite popular. Do I recommend them consistently every day for tinnitus? No. If it's the only thing you have, then it makes sense. But if you have other options based on what I discussed earlier, your level sound generators, hearing aids, or bone conduction headphones, then I'd recommend those for a retraining period. A few other quick points to wrap up this video is that you do not want to mask your tinnitus during the day. I don't recommend masking or covering your tinnitus during the day. In fact, what I see working and what research from tinnitus retraining therapy teaches us from my mentor, Paolo Jastrzeboff, who I studied with, is that we do not want to cover the tinnitus. We do not want to completely mask the tinnitus during the day. At night, I have no problem with that. Whatever helps you fall asleep. But during the day, try to find 
that mixing point where you can still hear the tinnitus and you can hear the sound therapy and don't go much louder than that. Also, we need the volume to be not the softest possible volume you can hear of the sound therapy, but a few steps up from that. And there you have a healthy range. Of course, this is based on individual hearing test. If you're looking for a hearing test, you can check the description of this video. We have our own hearing test here with Treble Health. It's one of the best that I found and it's free to use. I know managing tinnitus can be challenging and that's why I made this video to give you the extra tips and techniques that you need to make sure you get it right from the beginning. There's a lot of challenging cases of tinnitus, but let me make something very clear. A majority of cases get better. A majority of tinnitus cases get better and I believe yours will too if you follow the recommendations here. Think about the psychology, the sound therapy, the holistic mind-body connection. Reach out for help if you need it and always, always keep the hope. There's so many positive success stories out there. Stay hopeful. My name is Dr. Ben Thompson. I'm an audiologist and founder of treblehealth.com. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel where you can find even more videos on tinnitus and hearing conditions. Please stick around, check out the other videos here, and I'll even put one video on my side, which is one of my favorite videos talking about five most common mistakes people make with tinnitus sound therapy. I know a lot of patients like to watch this one over and over, so make sure to check that video out. Thank you. Bye.